No, oh my gosh. So here I am trying to record some IB physics videos, but instead I have Pilar, Seth, and Michael yelling at me. Pilar. Seth. Oh my, oh my gosh, okay. All I'm trying to do is talk about the fact that we're in one of the last topics of, the, of last year for IB, okay, okay, skip ahead. where we're specifically talking about things that hit, punch, and crash. Now, normally, when we deal with forces, we're going to use Newton's second law, but this is not the most useful thing. It's not as useful for what I'm generally going to call collisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this formula just a little bit. So the formula we have here is Newton's second law. We're going to rewrite Newton's second law for colliding things. Now, I'm going to do something that you wouldn't expect anybody to do unless they were taking a physics class. I'm going to bring down another formula that we use in physics, which is this formula. Now, no one would do this on their own, but we're going to isolate A. I couldn't have said it better myself, young Michael. We're going to isolate A using some algebra. So we got V equals AT plus U. We're going to isolate U or AT. So we got V minus U is AT. We're going to divide both sides by the time to get A. I want to be clear. No one would do this on their own unless they were in an IB class. Let me show you where this is leading. So we're going to take Michael's lead. He has already plugged this back into the formula here. And now we're going to multiply both sides by the time. When we do that, we get the formula that actually helps us solve force problems when things are colliding. We have a name for this formula. It's called the impulse momentum theorem. So we've got some vocab. F times T is the impulse. It's the force acting over the time. MV minus MU, that whole thing has a name. It's called the change in momentum. And the momentum itself is a quantity we use in IB. That's the mass times the velocity. It's matter in motion. And that's called the momentum. Let's talk units really quickly. All three things have the units of kilograms, meters, seconds to the negative first. Another way of writing this is Newton's seconds. So that's how we use, um, that's how we come up with the formula. And what we're going to do in the next part is actually apply this to a problem. What I'd really like to do now is actually apply this to solving um, an example. So we have a mass launched at a wall at 4 meters per second. It bounces back at 2 meters per second. We have its mass and we have the time it takes to bounce off the wall. This is the typical kind of momentum problem. We want to know the change in momentum, we want to know the impulse on it, and we want to know the force of bouncing. Let's actually draw what's going on. So we have the ball launched at the wall, and it goes in at four meters per second, then it hits the wall, and then it bounces back, this is two kilograms, and it's bouncing back at two meters per second. Notice the negative sign because it's bouncing back. So let's get the change in momentum. So that's mv minus mu, which is going to be two kilograms times negative two minus two times four. And that's going to give me negative 12 newton seconds. Okay. Now, the impulse is the change in momentum. And that tells me that the impulse is also negative 12 newton seconds. To get the bouncing force, we know that F times T is MV minus MU, which we already solved for as negative 12. So let's continue with this. We have the force. And then the time it's in contact with the wall with is negative 0.02 seconds. That's negative 12. So when we end up isolating the force, we end up getting a force of 
negative 600 newtons against the ball when it hits the wall. Now the next idea, conservation of momentum. So we have one mass and a second mass. They have respective initial velocities. They hit and they go in opposite directions. Now the idea is that as these go in opposite directions, we can actually predict based on their incoming speeds what the outgoing speed will be as well. And so we're going to actually use the impulse momentum theorem to figure out what's going on here, even though we may not know the pushes and the pulls that are making it happen. All right, now we're going to take a look at the second, again, idea here to come up with the formulas. This is a situation. And so what's going to happen is this. When the two things actually hit, we've got mass 1 and mass 2. They're exerting forces on each other. There's actually a force on 2 due to 1. And there's a third law reaction force on 1 because of 2. So what this means is, by Newton's third law, these forces are equal. What that also means is since the forces are equal, the impulse is equal on each one because they're in contact for the same amount of time. Finally, if the impulses are equal, then the change in momentum is equal. So we have m1v1 minus m1u1. Here it's m2v2 minus m2u2. Let's do a small amount of algebra. So here we have negative m1v1 plus m1u1 equals m2v2 minus m2u2. We're going to actually add the initial to both sides. So we're going to end up getting here negative m1v1 plus m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m2v2. Next, we're going to add the final m1v1 to both sides. We end up getting the following formula. m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1v1 plus m2v2. The point of this formula. If I know the total momentum at the beginning, I know the total momentum at the end, and I can use this to predict speeds. This is called the conservation of momentum. And we can actually use it um, in a problem. I'll give you an example right now. Here's a typical good example problem. Um, so we'll say here that... Um, No. Two bodies, so example. Okay. Two bodies. M1 is 2 kilograms, and M2 is 4 kilograms. Okay. And they are initially at rest um, with a compressed spring between them. Um, the spring is released and the heavier body moves 
away at 3.5 meters per second. So we want the speed of the other body. All right, so with this in mind, um, let's start. So we have this and this. This is four. This is two. And then the four moves like this, and the two moves like that, and we want their speed. We're going to use momentum conservation. So we have m1, u1, plus m2, u2 is m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Let's put in our numbers 4 times 0 to start with plus 2 times 0 to start with ends up being 4 going at 3.5 backwards I do this backwards plus 2 times its unknown speed this is going to be 0 equals, and we're going to again end up getting 14.0 plus 2v2. And that's negative 14.0. We'll add 14 to both sides. We divide by 2, and we end up getting that v2, the speed of the second object, is 7.00 meters per second. So that's the basics of momentum, impulse, and how they work. And I'm going to work out a couple more example problems prior to our meeting on Monday.